What up, everyone? So, it's that time of the month. Time for my monthly review. And I actually made it on time, because uh, I'm recording this before the boxes of June have started showing up. So I may actually be caught up for the month of June. Crazy thought. It's totally out there. So, if anyone's tuning into this for the first time, hello, welcome. Uh, the whole point of this channel is to help you, the viewer, find the best box for you. So what I do is I review all these boxes individually and give them scores and ratings. And then at the end of the month, I put them all side by side so you can get an idea of which boxes may be better, may be worse, or may just be geared for you. That's not the same answer for everyone. The most common question I get asked on this channel is, what's the best box out there? And it depends. It depends on what you like, what you're looking for, what you're interested in. There's so many variables. So I try to do the best I can to give ratings, but I'm not perfect. I, there's, there's no way I can rate this for everyone. So that's why I do this monthly video so you can see for yourself which one might be best for you and answer that question for yourself because I can never answer for you. It's impossible to tell. So my last monthly review was actually not that long ago. So I'm just going to skip over my whole beginning spiel thing because I don't think enough people have come to the channel since then where I need to explain it again. So if you're curious about it, just check out the last video. But I'll explain stuff on the way. So let's just jump right into the countdown and keep this one short so I can try and get caught up for June. So I have 14 boxes this month. And a lot of these boxes are, this is the last time we'll see them. The month of June should be a pretty small month as far as boxes. Um, so that, that'll help me to get caught up too because a lot of these have just kind of, you know, they haven't been doing that good. And overall the month, these are the boxes of the month of May, by the way. Um, the month of May was honestly not that great. I was not super impressed by anything. They all kind of, nothing was super terrible to be quite honest. There were no bad ones, but I don't think any of them really stood out and like blew me away like past months have. I don't think there was a clear winner this month. But anyway, so let's start with number 14. Number 14 is 1UP Box. And this box, I actually, this is the one, only one that I really didn't like. This is the last time we're ever going to see 1UP Box. Um, they've been around since the beginning, since I started this channel. They've been around a long time. They used to be really great. And the past, like, probably year, they've just kind of tapered off and kind of floated away off into the distance. All, most of the items in here are, like, third-party items. Um, and, and nothing, there's usually only one branded item each month, and it's not that great of it. It's a cheaper box, but still not the cheapest. It's a cost the same as about Loot Crate, and it's nowhere comparable in quality. So I've since canceled it. It's just not worth it anymore. So there's not much else to say about it. Honestly, I don't think that company's going to be around much longer. Um, the only people I can see this box being geared towards is for, like, younger kids because they don't really care about branded quality stuff. They just want some fun stuff to play with. So that's where I could see that box being marketed towards. Other than that, I really don't see much market for them, and I don't see that company sticking around, which is unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? All right. Number 13 is... Super Geek Box. So this one usually is the same as 1UP Box. They're remarkably similar. But this month they actually did a lot better than they have in the past month. They still, same situation, mostly third party items and one branded item. Same as 1UP Box. But their um, aftermarket like third party stuff was actually kind of good this month. I actually didn't mind it. They they put on some, they the things they put on there were actually kind of funny. And they made some good jokes there which is... They rarely ever do, but they did a pretty good job as far as the design and quality of it. Even though it wasn't branded, it was still kind of good stuff that I saw some entertainment value out of. So that's good. Um, and this one will be around one more month, but that's it. But same stories, one up, same situation, a lot of third party stuff. And that's just not really my thing. Um, I like the branded stuff, I like the quality, so it just isn't as much there. I still think Super Geek Box is a little better than One Up Box, and it kind of always has been, but. Not by much, and it's still at the bottom of the countdown compared to the rest of these boxes. So there you go. That is what it is, too. Not much more to say about it. It'll be around one more month, and then that'll probably be gone forever. <clears throat> All right. Number 12. TMNT Box. This is one that was around before, but they've kind of revamped the company. It used to be, I think, a $30 box. It was bigger. Now it's only a $13 box, which is by far the cheapest box out there. It really is the cheapest one. The next in line is 1UP and Super Geek, and I think those are 20 a piece. This one's only 13 so much, much cheaper box, but a much smaller box, obviously. This box only came with two items. They were good items. They were both branded. I liked them both. 
but it, you know, it, it only comes with two items. So it, it's kind of personal preference. Some people like it cheaper with a less risk, not risk more, uh, less risk for your money. And some people don't like that because they like more items in the box. So that again is just personal preference. So that's up to you what you think about that. But honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. It's cheaper and there's less stuff, but I, you got better quality stuff. It was all branded. They didn't have to do any third-party aftermarket stuff. You really got everything you needed. And it's very specific, obviously. Don't get this box if you're not a Ninja Turtles fan, obviously. So for people that are, you're getting exactly what you pay for. So you're getting Ninja Turtles stuff. That's exactly what you want. So that's where it's a narrow market, but for the people in that market, it's kind of exactly what you may want. Now, you're never going to see anything exclusive from this company. It's going to be um, pretty generic stuff. Like this one came with a beanie and adorbs. And I'm sure next month it will probably come with like a pop and a shirt or something like that. So a lot of that stuff, which is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing bad about that. I like those products, especially if they're Ninja Turtles. But just something you need to know going into it. You're probably never going to see anything like rare from this box. It's going to be common Ninja Turtle stuff, but it's still it's worth your money if you want to check it out. So if you like Ninja Turtles or if you want to give it as a gift, it is definitely worth the money. You definitely got what you paid for. Um, the only reason it gets lower on the countdown is just not much variety and not a lot of items. Again, that's personal preference, but I think a lot of people do like more items. So that's basically the only reason it got lower on there, but that's all. Other than that, I think it was a great box. I don't think anything was wrong with it at all. All right, number 11. Nerd Block Classic, one of many boxes from the Nerd Block Company, and they have not been doing so hot lately. They've just not been doing a good job, uh, um, and I think most of the reason is, which most people agree on, they're just in over their head. They've got too many different boxes going on. It's too hard to give each individual box special attention, so they've all kind of become like average boxes because there's just so many of them. It's too difficult for that company to do that many. So hopefully the company will grow in the near future so they will go back to how they were because they used to be a really great box. And now they've just been kind of so-so. And the things in here were fine, but a lot of the things in here I didn't understand how they were in theme. Um, it was supposed to be an 80s theme, and we got um, Ghostbusters, Etch-A-Sketch, and 16 Candles. Totally 80s for sure. And then we got Iron Man. We got Civil War stuff, which I like, but that had nothing to do with 80s. And then we got... Rick and Morty stuff, which is a modern uh, show, and again, I, I don't know if it originated from the 80s, but it just it seemed like there were so many more options of 80s things, things that they could have put in there. I don't really think they hit the theme that well, and the value was, it was okay, it wasn't great or anything, and, but the, the quality of product was fine, but it just wasn't, wasn't that great. It seemed overly common with a lot of the stuff, and you know, it just wasn't that impressive. So, But that's kind of how it's been lately, which is really unfortunate. It's a real bummer to see that happen. But, again, it is what it is. All right, moving on, making good time. Number 10. And number 10 is Comic-Con Box. Another one we're going to see for the last time ever this month. And that's mostly because this box is just too expensive. Um, they've been okay. They have their good and bad months. I've never been blown away by them. And sometimes it's been disappointing, which normally isn't that big of a deal for a company. But this is a $40 box. When you're spending $40 every month, you better get some good shit. Like, you better get quality out of it. So if they ever miss a month, that's enough for people to just bail even though it was one bad month. Because it's just too much money to risk. And if they even do one bad box, a bunch of people bail, they lose a lot of money, and then they can't put it into their next box. So it's a vicious cycle they have. The one good thing about this box that you can look forward to is they do usually have some pretty good comic books. And by good, I mean exclusive and valuable. This is one of the few boxes where you uh, not only get comics, but you get actually ones that hold real value. So that's the one good thing I could say about this box. Other than that, everything in here has been very, very generic. You've gotten some artwork in there, which is nice, but it's not signed or numbered or anything. It's nothing special about it. It's just prints. Um, and the t-shirt quality has been good. The designs haven't always been the best, but the quality of the t-shirt's been good. So that's a good thing. But the, the really the only thing holding this company together is the fact that they get exclusive comic book covers, and those are very valuable. If it wasn't for that, this box would be garbage. So $40 is too much to risk on one good comic every month. You sometimes get your money back with even one comic, but 
you know, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it's still too much at the end of the day. 40 bucks is too much. If they could bring it down to 30 I think it would be fine, but they don't seem to be able to do that. So this is the last time we'll ever see him. I doubt it will come back. It's been a good run. There you go. All right. Number nine. And number nine is Lutaku. So I actually really like this box. This is only the second month I've ever gotten this box, but I actually really enjoy it. Um, it's from uh, Hong Kong, I believe. So the good thing about it is you often get things in here that you can only get from Asia. So it's imported stuff, and it's good quality stuff, which is what I really like. And that's what we got here. One of the items, the big item, uh, the Ultron figure, was from Asia. And that's where you get it from. It's hard to get it here in America, and you have to pay more for it. So it's cool to see that stuff. That's what I really like. And that's what we got last month, too. And the other stuff in here was a lot of it was stuff we can get in America, but it was still cool stuff. This was a, a, an Avengers-themed one, so I really like it. Pretty much the only reason it got lower on the countdown um, was just because of the value. They didn't, the value this month was not super high. And this is an expensive box to get here in America. To get any monthly box in America, it's going to cost a tremendous amount just because of shipping. It's, it's a big box. It's huge. So shipping is outrageous. So after shipping and taxes and everything, this box costs $65 which is a lot, so it's very hard for them to give value considering that. The last month, they actually did pretty well, and you got pretty much double your value. This month, not so much. You only got a little bit more than you paid for, but you did get really good stuff. I genuinely liked everything in here, and I thought it was good quality and good choices. So I think their only struggle is just to get that dollar value, um, and it kind of seems like it's going to be hit or miss sometimes. So it's just a lot of money to risk if you don't know if you're going to get the same dollar value you put into it. But other than that, I think it's a really good company and I like this box. I enjoy getting it each month and I think the things they choose are legitimately good choices. So I really enjoy getting this box every month. So again, only reason it's lower was because of the value this month. Alrighty. Number eight. And number eight was Arcade Block. <clears throat> This one was really good for a while too, but like I said with all the nerd block boxes, they kind of tapered off a little bit. And this one wasn't bad or anything. We got some exclusives in here, but it was just odd choices. Like we got a plush in there, and it was good quality, but it was from Warcraft, and I don't know if that movie is going to be quite popular enough to really merit like giving that out. It's fine, but I don't know. I, it just didn't seem that great. And we got a tin which is cool, everyone likes those, but it was from a very specific game, so I doubt it's going to hold any value. And uh, there's some filler stuff in there, and that's kind of all it was. So, Arcade Block's been good a lot of times, but lately it hasn't been that great. But again, I hope this isn't a sign of things to come. I hope this company does gain its momentum back and pick it back up. But we'll have to wait and see. Alright, number seven. And number seven was Smuggler's Bounty, Star Wars box from Funko. And, you know, uh, I have mixed reviews about this. Not mixed feelings about this, but mixed reviews. Because the ratings I give are not based on me. They're based on you guys. The feedback I get from the comments, from the community, that's what I try to base everything off of. And this box is kind of, there's opposite ends of the spectrum. You either love it or you hate it. And something I've realized is that there really aren't a lot of casual Star Wars fans. There's very few of them. People either don't really like Star Wars, or they are die-hard, hardcore fans. There's very few people that are in that middle range. I'm one of those people in that middle range. I like it. I go see all the movies. I'll see them at midnight every time, and I'll enjoy them. But at the same time, I don't know every single character's name that's ever appeared in a Star Wars film ever. Whereas most people do, because they're that much of a fan of it. And that seems to be the problem with this box. There's a lot of items in there of characters that just aren't that well known. Not that they're unpopular or unknown, but to the average viewer, we probably don't know about them. They pick a lot of less popular characters. So that's good if you're a diehard fan because you're getting things in there that you're not going to see anywhere else because they're doing those less popular characters. So that's a good thing for the diehard fans. But for the casual fans, it's not so much of a good thing because you're 
getting characters that you don't really recognize. You probably recognize them from the movie, but you probably don't know their name because they never said it in the movie. A perfect example is uh, IG-88. He appeared in books. He appeared in a lot of the Star Wars books. He was a main character in those. But as far as the movies, he was in it, but uh, I'm, I'm sure they may have mentioned his name at some point, but he, it's not like he was a main character or anything. Boba Fett, on the other hand, very main character. Most people will know him. Very popular. That's a fine choice. But, the, like, IG-88, it's like, it's fine, but I can only see, like, the really hardcore collectors wanting that. And it was the same with last month with, like, Snaggletooth and, and things like that. Uh, characters that were in the movie, they're recognizable, but not popular enough to where I would, like, make space on my shelf for them. So this is where it comes into play where it's just personal preference. If you like Star Wars, it's like, well, how much do you like Star Wars? Are you a diehard fan? Then you're going to love this box because you do get your value's worth. You got pretty much double what you paid for it, so you got good value and you got good quality stuff. But if you're just a casual fan who likes it but's not in love with it, then I'd probably pass on this box. And that may be what I end up doing too because a lot of times I just sound ignorant not knowing as much as these hardcore fans do when I'm trying to review this box. So that's up to you, personal preference on that. But I see it kind of going that way, less popular characters, until the new movie comes out. There's going to be one every year, so around that time, they're going to be good because they're going to be main characters, they're going to be new characters, they're going to be things that are sought after. But the whole rest of the year, it's going to be those characters that maybe appeared for 30 seconds at one time. So, you know, that's totally up to you whether you want to do that or not. Uh, one thing to note is that I heard from a lot of people, and me included, everything arrived damaged. Like, not badly damaged, but it's just Funko in general just doesn't take care of their products. The paint jobs are always messy. Things are often out of order. Boxes constantly come bent or damaged because they're just pushing out so much shit every single month, just thousands and thousands of these figures, there's no way to quality check every single one. So with any of these Funko boxes, you're constantly seeing that problem of quality control. Their, their quality is not there. Boxes come bent, not really closed all the way. Things come banged up. Paint jobs are all messed up. And that's how Funko's always been. I've never known them not to be that way. They're getting better, but still, it's still a problem. So something else to note about it. Anyway, that's enough about that box. Alright. Oh, crap. Just knocked my camera off axis. Moving on to number six. And number six is Loot Gaming. Someone that will be around for at least a little while longer because I didn't cancel my subscription. Um, and this one's been okay. Same thing with the Star Wars box. This is more for the hardcore gamer. This is, um, I wouldn't say they do less known franchises, because the franchises they pick are definitely well known. But it's not for the casual gamer, again, like me. I like video games. I play video games all the time. I'm familiar with most of them, but I'm really familiar with, like, the popular franchises. The franchises I grew up with. The big names, Nintendo, and Sega, and, like, Capcom. Like, the big main titles, the big main characters. That's what I kind of like. And that's what more what Arcade Block sticks to, the more well-known stuff. Loot Gaming, however, is more current games, is more up-to-date games, which are fine, I'm sure they're fantastic, but I just, I'm not up-to-date. I don't have the time to try out all these new games. I'd love to, believe me, I don't get me wrong, I'd love to be able to try out all these games, but I just don't have time to, and there's no way I'm going to be able to in the near future either. So a lot of these things are lost on me. Um, but that's irrelevant, that doesn't matter. It's just that you should know that if you are a casual gamer, you like the classics, probably go more towards Arcade Block. If you're more of a, a consistent gamer and you like the more popular franchises up to date, that's where Loot Gaming kind of comes into play. And they do decent stuff. Uh, this month wasn't the greatest just because some of the choices were a little bit weird. Uh, not that bad. We got a notebook. And the, a lot of the, there was a lot of value in this stuff, which I don't really understand why, but there was. So that's why I got a little higher, because I wasn't a fan of the stuff in there, but other people were, and they had good value on it. They sell for high prices, so it doesn't matter what I think, that it is what it is. Higher dollar amount equals higher on the countdown. So there you go. So that's Loot Gaming. Mm -hmm. Number five. 
And number five is Comic Block. So this one hasn't been too good since it started. It started like three or four months ago, and it's been total crap. Um, this month was much better. And not that it did like major leaps and bounds, but they did what they should have been doing the whole time. The whole reason for Comic Block was for comics. And they made it into a bigger block to include different kinds of stuff, and they kind of lost sight of the comic books. Now they're getting back to it because they put two titles in here that had exclusive covers, because that's what you want to see. You want something for the readers, and you want something for the collectors. So they hit both markets with this, and one of the comics was actually very valuable. So that's what I'd expect to see from it. I'm hoping in the future that the items they put in there become exclusive as well, but you know, that's just hopes and dreams. The stuff they put in there wasn't bad, but it just wasn't rare at all. There was nothing special about it. It was good stuff. I liked it, but there was nothing super special about it. But it gave decent value. It gave good comic books, and it gave ones that were exclusive, so that's what we like to see. And the rest was good stuff, but it kind of was just filler at that point. But it still did good value-wise. It really got good value considering that Punisher book got so so much uh, value to it so that's why I got higher on the countdown. I hope this kinda continues with momentum because I want this box to be good so bad because I like comic book stuff. I like comic books and I like comic book themed stuff. T-shirts, collectibles, most of the stuff behind me is characters from comic books. That's what I like so I really hope this box keeps getting better and better because I want to see it get better. But that's just me. Alright Number four. Number four, the BAM box. A box I'm always happy to see. The special thing about this box and what you can expect is things that are signed. The company that makes this box has an auction company that um, is uh, specializes in signed stuff. So signed like autographs from uh, famous people, comic books, artists, Things like that, so that's something you can expect from them, which I really like. Um, we got a signed um, picture of Tony Todd, I believe his name was, who's from The Flash. He's also well known from Candyman. Um, it seems like they know a lot of horror people. Last month we got a signed thing from the original Jason. And we always get a piece of artwork in here, and it's always signed by the artist, and it's always numbered, which is good because that's where it gets value from. And there's also incentives. Every once in a while they put like special comic books and things in there for like 1 out of 10 boxes or something like that. So there's incentives and there's always um, upgradable items. Like I got one this month. There was a Lord of the Rings thing in there and I got a gold version, an actual gold ring from it. And the quality on it is really nice. I think it's good quality stuff. And everything else um, in there was uh, not super high quality, but it was good stuff as in I liked it and it was entertaining. So I liked it a lot too and the values there. Overall, I think this is a great company and I think this company is going to be around for quite a while because they have their own thing that they do. None of these other boxes are specializing in signatures. None of them. Every once in a while they kind of do, but very, very rarely. This box does it like every month. If not one, maybe two, even three signed things from well-known people. So I think this box is going to be around a long time and I really enjoy getting it every month because it's really surprising who they can get a hold of who they can get stuff from, the artists they're in contact with. like it's, it's really cool, and I really enjoy this box. So that's why it gets the number four spot. Mm -hmm. Number three. Number three was DC Legion of Collectors. And this one was, you know, honestly not even that great. It was, it was okay, and it was good. Um, I liked it because they had good variety. They had a comic, a t-shirt, a pop, and then the, the rock candy, patch and pin. So you got a good mixture of stuff. Whereas these Funko boxes usually don't have a good mixture. Like the Smuggler's Bounty. It had two pops and a shirt, and that was kind of it. And it's like, that's kind of what you always get from that box. There's no other different stuff in there, which is kind of a bummer. But DC has more stuff that they can do. Like they have the Dorbs, they, also, they have the Pop, they have Vinyl Sugar, comics, and all kinds of stuff. I didn't think I was going to like this as much because... I haven't seen any of the DC TV shows, but this one had decent variety, had decent value, and yeah, there you go. And it's not that this one was amazing, and that's not why it got the number three spot. It's just, like I said, the month of May just wasn't that great. So it just did better than other boxes, but that's really all there was to it. All right, number two, Loot Crate. 
One that's often in the top of the countdown. They always do a pretty good job with this crate. I really liked it. Um, one thing to note, which people told me because I just uploaded the video, the oven mitt got recalled. Apparently, there's something wrong with it. I don't know how many things can go wrong with an oven mitt. I, I'm assuming that this oven mitt is flammable or something. Like, other than it being flammable, I don't really understand how an oven mitt could be defective. So, it, I guess that's the problem, which would be really ironic to have something protect you from the heat and then catch on fire. But that's the only thing I can think of that could be possibly wrong with the oven mitt. Like, what else could go wrong with an oven mitt? So, I'm very uh, hesitant to use it. But either way, it's still cool because it looks like the Infinity Gauntlet. That's still cool, even if you just want to keep it and have it around. It's just a cool little glove. So that's the only thing that was really wrong with it. I like the Q-Fig they put in there. I think it was really cool. I wish it was exclusive. It wasn't. No big deal. And I like the Dragon Ball item. I was a big fan of that. And the shirt was good quality. And you got really good value. Um, that was a really good box. But Loot Crate usually is. They do a good job, and I like them a lot. So that's why they get number two. Number one. Number one, Loot Crate as well, Loot Crate DX. So this one, same story. I didn't think it was like all that amazing this month, but there was just no other box that did better. I, I like the bigger boxes because you get bigger items and you get better quality. And this box definitely delivers that. You got bigger items, you got one of the metal figures, and we got an exclusive one, which was the Mark V, which I'm a big fan of, so I thought that was cool. The art print was very nice in quality. Got a nice long sleeve shirt and a duffel bag. Things that are better in quality and bigger in size that you don't normally see in these boxes because this one is literally like huge. And you pay a lot more for it, but they tend to deliver. So one that I'm always excited to see each month because there's just such possibility each month of what they could put in there. The options of what they can put in each month are astronomically better than most of these boxes just based on dollar value and size. So it's really cool and exciting to get this box every month. And like I was saying, this one didn't blow me away. I thought last month's was better, but it's still, I liked it a lot more than the other ones. You got exclusive stuff in there. You got good quality stuff. The stuff you got was good. The only thing uh, I could say that could have done better was just the design on a lot of them. I thought the designs were very simplistic on like the hat, the bag, and the shirt. You know, not a big deal. Nothing really bad about that, but I just feel like they could have changed it up a little. But that's just me being nitpicky. Anyway, that was number one. So that was all the all the all the boxes of the month of May. Kept this really short. Um, the reason it was so short is because I just honestly didn't have that much to say. Because like I was saying, this the the month just wasn't that spectacular. Nothing really stood out to me. I don't have much to say about it. It was a very average month. It kind of just like skated by. Um, now that summer's coming around, I think we'll see some really good stuff because the blockbuster movies are coming back around. So we'll see some better themes. And hopefully it kind of just goes from there. Other than that, um, feel free to hit up the comments. Uh, ask any questions you like. It takes me a long time to get back to comments and respond to people. It takes me weeks, so don't be offended if I don't respond right away. But I always get to them eventually. So feel free to jump in the community fan page as well and talk about whatever you like. Uh, post, trade, anything you want to see. And anything you want to see from the channel, if there's boxes you want to see reviewed, send me a link and I'll try my best to review them for you. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped you out in some way to help you find the best box and possibly save you some time or some money in your future adventures. So anyway, this has been the Beardy Nerd. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video in the month of June. Love you all. Peace.